Hello everyone and welcome to the world of reproduction. Today in this video we are going to study about unit 6 chapter number 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plant. Already in the last chapter we studied about reproduction and its types. We also saw what exactly the sexual reproduction is and its events. So today in this chapter we are just going to focus on the events that will take place in a flowering plant. So before going into the depth of this chapter let us first see what exactly the sexual reproduction is. So sexual reproduction is nothing but what? It's a process of formation and fusion of haploid gametes to produce diploid zygote. That is nothing but what? As we know, there are haploid gametes. If suppose is a male haploid gamete and this is a female haploid gamete. When these two gametes fuses, it is going to form what? Diploid zygote. And this diploid zygote, then it will lead to a formation of new individual or offspring. Now, as we are going to see the sexual reproduction and its events in a flower, why? Why we are just going to consider in a flowering plants? Why only in a angiosperms? It's just because in a kingdom plantae, we saw there are five divisions. But among those five divisions, only the division of angiosperm is very well developed and it have a reproductive organ as a flower. So let us see some of the importance of flower and how it leads to sexual reproduction. So, see, as we see a myriads of flowers that we enjoy gazing at, that is nothing but what? There are innumerable or there are countless flowers that we observe in our everyday life, right? Plus, we see there are different shapes, they are of different colors, they have a scent, they have perfumes, they have a rich colors. All this thing is nothing for what? For the attraction. And this attraction is for what? For whom? This attraction is either it can be for humans, either it can be for insects, it can be for animals. And this attraction will help flowers for the reproduction process, right? Or you can say it will lead to the pollination process through which the further events will take place. We've also seen that flowers and floral parts they also show a great adaptation, means. The, even the flowers and their floral parts are of different shape. They can be of different color or they can be of different size. So that also leads to what one kind of a path for sexual reproduction. And at the end, as an end product, it will form what fruits and seeds. We, we have even seen that the human also have a relationship, a great relationship with the flower and it can also they can also use this flower as an object of admiration aesthetic ornamental social religious and cultural value or else they can also use this flower to convey their feeling of love affection happiness grief and mourning so this is the reason we consider flower as a fascinating organ of angiosperm and we can also say that flower is nothing but what it's a beautiful product of a nature for plants to carry out the sexual reproduction so before going into the events that takes place during the sexual reproduction we'll see about a typical structure of the flower so this is nothing but what a typical structure of flower where you can see that it is made up of two organs one is a fertile organ and another is a sterile organ right so fertile organs can also be known as what essential organs that means it is a necessary organs or those organs which will participate in a reproduction process and non-essential or sterile organs is nothing but what they are present in a flower but they won't participate in a reproduction process now let's see fertile in under fertile organs it will be an androsium and gynosium now androsium is nothing but what it's a male reproductive organ it is made up of what stamen 
so this is nothing but what stamen stamen is made up of what filament and the anna connective tissue whereas gynoecium is a female reproductive system which consists of carpel and pistil and carpel or pistil is made up of you can see this is a carpel or pistil it is made up of stigma style and ovary inside the ovary you can see there is a presence of what ovule fine now let us see about the non essential stellar organs those are nothing but what sepals and petals so sepals are known as what calyx and petals can also be known as what corolla now when the sepal and petal both are alike means if we are unable to distinguish between them at that moment we say the sepal and perianth uh, petal as a perianth fine so this is nothing but what a peduncle of the flower which is attached to the node of the stem this is a thalamus where all these four parts will be attached and i would also like to say that flower is also considered as a condensed shoot now why it is considered as a condensed shoot because see we know there are two systems in a plant one is a root system and a shoot system from this shoot system there is a development of stem leaves flowers fruits branches and so on so if the shoot gets condensed then there will be a formation of a bud at the node of the stem and from that bud there will be a development of what flower so we consider this flower as a condensed shoot right now let us begin with the events that takes place during the sexual reproduction in flowering plant we already studied that there are three events right the first is pre fertilization event fertilization event and a post fertilization event here i have written a double fertilization don't get confused this is a fertilization event itself but in flowering plants the fertilization takes two times so we say it as what double fertilization that we will see later on how it takes place fine let us first begin with the pre fertilization event right in pre fertilization event we need to study about the structures and the different events that takes place for the formation of gametes now we know as there are two organs one is a androecium which is a male reproductive organ and another is a gynoecium that is a female reproductive organ in both this male and female organ we need to see how the gametes are been formed and how its development are been carried out so in this video we are only going to study about the male reproductive organ that is androecium and the part structure of anther right next all the terms will study later on so let us begin first so this is nothing but what a male reproductive organ of a plant which is also known as androecium and the stamen of an androecium is considered as a unit of it fine so either we can i can say that stamen is a unit of androecium and this stamen is made up of filament it is made up of anther and it is made up of a connective tissue now let us study each part let us start first with the filament so filament is nothing but what it's a sterile long slender stalk sterile as i said you it is not going to participate for the reproductive process so it is known as sterile it is long slender stalk means it is a long plus it's a thin stalk right which is going to bear a anther at the tip of it and it will be attached to the thalamus or the petals now filament can be of varied size and shape in a stamen depending upon which flower it is fine next is what connective tissue this connective tissue is going to hold this anther plus it is also going to contain a vascular tissue that means it will have a xylem and phloem in it why because see in this filament also if you see from the in between of this filament there will be a passage of xylem and phloem when it opens up you can see 
it is in the form of what connective tissue which is holding this two anthers fine so even the anther needs nutrition even it needs water so it will come through by it will come through this vascular tissue now the main part that we need to study under the stamen is of anther so main is what the structure of anther why because inside this anther there is an development of male gametophyte but before we reach to the male gametophyte we need to study about the structure of anther so you can see anther is nothing but what it's a bilobe right you can see over here see this anther is of what bilobe see here this is the transverse section of an anther so i would like to explain you through this transverse section if i cut down this anther you can see this is one lobe and this is a another lobe even in this picture you can see in this picture this is one lobe and at the back you can see there is another lobe and both this two both this lobe are attached by a tissue known as connective tissue so as you saw the anther is of how many lobes it is of two lobes right and in this each lobe of the anther you can see there are two chambers this is one and this is two this is one and this one is second one right so it have a two chambers this two chambers are known as what theca as there are two theca we we can all we also say it as what dithecus right now this theca can also be known as pollen sac it can also be known as pollen chambers it can also be known as what microsporangia yeah, so these are the different names of theca right now if we see a longitudinally if you cut this longitudinally you can see there are two grooves in it right due to which we uh, through this grooves we can understand that yes this anther is divided into two parts plus when we cut this anther transversely what you will see that this anther see this sex this part of the anther is a transverse section of an anther through the, in this you can see that it is divided into four sides 1 2 3 and 4 right that is the reason we can also say that anther have a tetragonal structure which structure tetragonal structure and at each corner of this tetragonal structure this brown color shape structure is nothing but what a microsporangia or it's a microsporangia so we can also say it as what tetrasporangiate what we can also say it as a tetrasporangiate so see in a male reproductive organ which is known as androecium stamen is a unit of androecium which is made up of anther filament and connective tissue where the most important part of the stamen is what anther which is already bilobed one and two right it have a two chambers which is known as theca it has a it has a four sides so we say it as what tetragonal structure and at the each tetragonal structure at each corners we have a four micro each microsporangia so total it is 1 2 3 4 so how many microsporangia are there four so we say it as what tetrasporangiate right so this is all about what the structure of anther fine next we need to see the how the structure of anther will lead to the formation of structure of microsporangia right where the male gametophyte is going to be formed right but before going to the or uh, before learning the structure of microsporangia i would just like to show you one slide where you can see how there will be a conversion of this anther to the microsporangial fall right so see in this picture you can see that this picture the picture a is of a young anther right in this young anther you can see the first layer of the anther is made up of what epidermis right so i can say anther is covered by what epidermis and in this picture you can see that all the cells are homogeneous means they are all the cells are what same right later on this 
epidermal cells or these homogeneous cells will start dividing but how after the epidermis layer there is one more layer which is known as what hypodermis or you can say there is a hypodermal cells this hypodermal cells will get differentiate into the archesporial cell it will get differentiate into what archesporial cell means what is going to happen ki the hypodermal cells jo hai they will start getting elongated they will become distinguished the nucleus will also be distinguished and those cells will be now considered as what archesporial cell now this archesporial cell will divide periclinary clinary periclinary means what they are going to divide parallelly right all the cells will divide parallelly so that the cells will get stuck on one upon another right and when this archesporial cell divides it is going to form two type of cell one is a parietal cell and another is a primary sporogenous cell parietal cell will be towards the epidermis and primary sporogenous cell will be towards the center now later on what will happen this primary sporogenous cell will form a male gametophyte and this parietal cell will divide further to form a microsporangial wall right and this microsporangial wall will have a four layers that is epidermis endothelium middle layer and tapetum you can see this is the an arch structure of a anther where you can see all the four layers of the microsporangial wall plus you can see the sporogenous tissue which have converted into what pollen grain tetrads right here if this anther is in a primary state at that moment we won't be able to distinguish between this sporangium fine when it starts dividing you can see we have a four microsporangia how many microsporangia four microsporangia when this microsporangia or the pollen grains get mature in it right at that moment what is going to happen both this microsporangia will get fuse right so what will happen to the cells which are in between these two microsporangia this cells are known as what sterile tissue this sterile tissue will get disintegrate and both this microsporangia will get what fuse right so what is going to happen both this microsporangia will get fuse so in the mature stage we always see that anther is bilobed why because both this structure is considered as what one but when it is getting developed we see that it have a tetragonal structure fine so this was all about the structure of anther and how it is going to to lead to the formation of microsporangial wall and sporogenous cells right which is important for the structure of microsporangia and for the for the events known as microsporogenesis the structure of microsporangia and microsporogenesis will study in a next video so till that bye thank you